Hi, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us. My name is Andrea Zarkon Heller, and today you're going to learn about buy.gsa.gov, a smart place to do market research. I'm the director of the Stakeholder Engagement Division within GSA's Office of Enterprise Strategy Management. I've spent some time as a contract specialist as well as a contracting officer awarding contracts on the multiple awards schedule as well as helping other agencies do their acquisitions as well. So what we're going to talk about today, what is buy.gsa.gov? And you might be hearing about this site for the first time. We're going to walk through a case study live on the site, and then we're going to go through whatever questions you have. I'll try to answer those as well. So what is it? So this it's a website that is designed to make it easier for folks like you to do the acquisition process as well as industry to bring their supplies, their services into the federal marketplace. So why does it even exist in the first place? So there's a couple of reasons. You've probably visited some of our other sites like eBuy, IT Solutions Navigator, eLibrary, and what you'll see here on the screenshot and also based on whatever you've previously experienced, they're different sites, the functionality varies, they have different purposes, and they also look and feel different. So you're experiencing a lot of differences in GSA. We are also experiencing those. So what we have is a lack of interoperability and data sharing between systems, as well as our systems are managed differently. They have different data sources. So there's a lot of differences on the front end and the back end. And so that's essentially what the vision is for buy.gsa.gov is making them consistent, right? So giving you a great experience, connecting federal government agencies to suppliers so that you can fulfill your missions. And so buy.gsa.gov, we're starting to do that, right? So you have one sign on, it's got an intuitive design, we're designing with you in mind. It's got a consistent look and feel. And as we add functionality to it, you'll see that look and feel across the different tools. Your feedback drives our development. So in FY 2019 to FY 21, we conducted over 65 sessions of usability testing with more than 15 agencies, which you'll see here. And so when we were talking to folks, we focused on things like, how does this look? How does this feel? How does it how do you can you navigate the site when you're doing a search? Are you actually getting the results that you want? And so in FY22, so some updated numbers, we were able to do even more of those usability sessions in a shorter amount of time, focusing on different parts of the site with various agencies. We got a lot of really great feedback and we were actually able to implement 97 improvements on the site as a result. So we really take that feedback to heart. So some of the things that we found, folks shared that they wanted a way to save and share documents with colleagues and team members. There wasn't an easy way to access templates or sample documents for requirements. So things like statement of work, performance work statements, uh, remembering passwords, we all have a lot of logins, right? And there would be one login for one GSA system and then a different login for another one. And then also plain language, things tended to be too technical. And if you're doing market research and it's not your job to do acquisition on a regular basis, or it's your job to do an acquisition on a regular basis, but you're buying something you're not normally used to buying, um, that lack of plain language. And so we've started to address that through buy.gsa.gov, through things like Project Center, the ability to find documents that you can repurpose for your acquisitions, logging in once, um, and then making more of an effort to make things, uh, make sure documents and parts of the site are in plain language. So today we're going to walk through a case study of buying a mobile office. So what is that? Um, a mobile office is actually like a temporary space. So think a trailer or a building that's not there for very long that you use as an office. 
And so we're going to look for some vendors through a couple of different parts of buy.gsa.gov. We're going to find a sample bill of materials or a statement of work. And then uh, because this product needs people in order to get it together, we're going to see how much a project manager might cost in this instance. So now I am actually going to share my screen. And we're going to go into the site live. So the website is buy.gsa.gov and I'm actually, I'm in a different part. So I'm going to click on the main area. So when you come to the site for the first time, this is what you're going to see. So there is a sign in button here. There is a lot of information that is available publicly without having to sign in. Uh, that being said, for the best experience, I do recommend signing in. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. And so you can either sign in with your FAST ID or your max.gov login. And I'm just realizing right now I normally log in with max.gov. So that's what I'm going to do. And so you'll see that my PIV card is connected to my max.gov account and now I'm in. And so one of the first things I'm going to do is to figure out, okay, what contractors can potentially do this work? So I am actually going to research GSA contracts and vendors. So I'm going to click right here for research GSA contracts and vendors. And so I'm going to hit acknowledge. We are currently under development and we welcome your feedback. So uh, you can hit the feedback button on the side of each page and I'll show that in a minute as well. Right here, feedback. So you'll type in your feedback and hit submit. So what I am going to do is actually change this to special item number. If you'll see here, there's different ways that you can search. You can search by NAICS code, special item number, the name of the vendor, their UEI, or their contract number. And so I am going to do SIN in this case. And I didn't realize that these were the same things until I started poking around and doing some research. But when I stumbled them on mobile office and saw it, I was like, oh, I know what that is. That's a prefabricated building. So I'm going to start typing that in and... I just typed in pre and you can see there's um, some predictive stuff going on in the background and I am going to pick this special item number. And so when I hit search, you can see it's currently showing 10 of the 78 contracts under that particular special item number and there's various filters. So let's say I have some socioeconomic goals to meet. I'm going to click small business. You can filter by a category, in this case it's facilities or subcategory. And then you, I had clicked small business earlier, so uh, you can click on different types of socioeconomic categories if you want. Um, I'll click 8A to see what that does. And so you can see I have three entries and they provide this type of information that you see in the columns. And I'm going to click on one like I just did to expand it. So here is a company and you can see some of their information, but I'm going to actually click into vendor details to see some more. So you can see information on their socioeconomic status, who they are, their SAM registration date, their cage code, their UEI number. So it does pull some information from SAM.gov, the contract information as well as their contract history. So you can see who bought from them um, and when. So the next thing I am going to do, so I'm gonna go back to the homepage. Let's say I'm interested in doing an RFI now that or a request for information now that I have an idea of what vendors, you know, are out there, um, who they've done work with. Um, let's see if any of them actually respond. So I'm going to cl click down and click on market research as a service. This is basically the process. 
We'll work with you to understand what you're looking for, develop the RFI, engage industry, and then get a report back to you, usually one to two weeks, but oftentimes shorter than that. And so what I'm going to do is click on and share this tab instead. So this is the initial page for market research as a service to start actually filling stuff out. And there's different things that you can do, but uh, we are going to do this one. RFI, next. And then I'm not gonna go through all of it, but you can see essentially how it works is it's a survey that will ask you a bunch of questions that will then be submitted to a GSA customer service director who will work with you to uh, make sure that the RFI is refined before it gets released to industry. So now I'm gonna go back here and we're going to, let's see. So I haven't written my statement of work yet. So that's something I should probably start to do. And how do I do that? So I'm gonna go to resources and I am going to go to browse the document library. I'll also show how I get to it from the homepage. Browse the document library. So let's see what happens when I type in mobile office in the keyword search. And you can see I've already done this at some point, office. Oh, look, there's a statement of work that says mobile office. You can also, I'm going to get rid of the search so we can actually, I can show you more of the functionality and I'll go back into it again, but you can filter by categories. In this case, I'm going to click on facilities. You can click on the different document types. You can click on what part of the acquisition stage you're on. So let me expand these some more and the type of resource that it is. So once again, I'm gonna type in mobile office. And there it is, okay. So there is an actual statement of work for a mobile office. And so it's a sample and it's, uh, we note that it can be used to inform the word choice, level of detail, et cetera for your requirements. So you're gonna to have to customize it a little bit, change the name of your agency, for example. If your requirements are a little bit different, make sure that that gets accounted for in whatever you release. Uh, this is a template for repurposing. And this is what it looks like. So you should see it now. It is a statement of work. For a mobile office. And so once, like I noted, please repurpose as necessary, but you don't have to start from scratch, right? This is something that you can use to base your requirements off of. So now I am going to go back to the main site. And now we are going to see how much a project manager might cost. So let's see, pricing information, that seems reasonable. So we're gonna click on Calc Plus Quick Rate. And if you are a previous user of Calc and wondering who moved my cheese, it's here. Uh, we have moved Calc to buy.gsa.gov. So I am gonna type in project manager. And so as I do that, you see it auto populates and anything that contains that, um, it's going to share that as something you can possibly pick from. There's also a ability to do exact match, but I'm just gonna hit search for now. And so I've done that. And a project manager on average is $134 an hour. So that doesn't tell me very much. Uh, probably not going to be super helpful for my independent government cost estimate. So let's play around with the filters on the left a little bit. So education level, I'll leave that. But let's say we want this person to have five to 10 
one years of experience, that seems good. And so you're seeing as I start to adjust some of these filters, this average price will change in real time. So it was 134, now it's 138. I want them to be, they're probably going to obviously need to be on site if they're building a modal office, but there's probably some work that they're going to have to do um, at their own office as well. So let's say both, for example, I've got socioeconomic goals to meet. So I'm going to say small business. See, it's changing. I'm going to leave subcategory and subcategory. Let's say I need them for some reason to have a security clearance. And you'll see that the results are changing in real time as I manipulate the filters. So you can download this as a graph, a PDF, you can export it to Excel. I do want to note one question that we get a lot is, okay, 132 an hour. That doesn't tell me a lot. I'm located in Washington, D.C., is that going to be the same as a project manager in Fargo, North Dakota or Austin, Texas? Probably not. So how do I account for that? And so uh, what we tell folks is a couple different things. One is um, think about where the work is being done. And if that's a high cost of living area, chances are that might be on the higher end of this average up to this you know, you see the one standard deviation up and one standard deviation back, it might be towards this end. Um, also, if that's a labor category where the work is being done and that labor category is not readily available, like there's just not a lot of people who do that work, they also might be on this upper end. On the lower side, if that work is being done in an area with a lower cost of living, they might be below the average. If that work is being done in a moderate to high cost of living area, but that labor is super plentiful, then that might also actually be lower. So it just kind of depends. You want to do your due diligence. You also want to look at other data sources for pricing, like the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So actually, Bureau of Labor Statistics will be bringing in that data in later this year, as well as information on non-multiple award schedule contracts. So think uh, GWAX, they're the big IT contracts like Alliant, for example, 80 Stars will also be, um, let's see, non-mass Bureau of Labor Statistics, as well as the information that you're currently seeing here, which is uh, information from the award, multiple award schedule. So way to deal with geographic differences. Uh, look at standard deviations, you know, up or down, cost of living, whether that labor category is super plentiful. There's also other resources that you can use for pricing. There's third party websites that contain salary information, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, like I mentioned, but we'll be bringing that in. So that is super exciting. And so you can use this put it in your contract file, use it to inform your independent government cost estimate. So now back to the slides, we'll walk through the case study again. Uh, we're buying a mobile office. Did we find some vendors? Yes, we used the contract and vendor search functionality to find them. We started down our RFI, our request for information path through market research as a service. We found a sample statement of work that we can then repurpose to our needs. And finally, we estimated how much a project manager might be in Calc Plus quick rate so that we can potentially use that in our independent government cost estimate. So that's our demo of buy.gsa.gov, a smarter way to do market research. And now we'll take some questions. 